Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and in today's video we're going to be creating a login slash sign up form using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Okay, so uh, this right here is going to be the finished product. Now, as we can see, it's a fairly straightforward login form, but uh, the most outstanding feature of this form is that if I was to press on this uh, create account button, it's actually going to change the form itself to of course be a create account or sign up form okay so we can then go back and forth between each one of these forms and this right here is fairly easy to achieve using just a tiny bit of JavaScript okay so let's see a few more features which the form is going to support so for example if I was to enter in a username and a password right here we can see we get the message incorrect username slash password combination and this right here can also be a success message okay um, moving on to the create account form um, each one of these input fields is going to have their own validation so for example um, if I was to say here a five character username and then try to submit we can see right there we get username must be at least 10 characters in length okay so you can add your own custom validation to each one of these input fields themselves okay so let's go inside uh, this tab right here and begin from scratch to of course create what we just saw okay so going inside the text editor we can see right here I've got an index HTML page okay now inside here of course there is not much going on but I have included both here a main.css file and a main.js file and um, they're of course linked up right here in the style sheet and the JavaScript right down here now I've also got a background image so this right here is going to be completely optional Okay, you don't need to have a background image. Um, if you don't want to, you can simply just specify a background color instead of an image. Okay, so now I'm just going to open up both the main.css and the main.js and then hide the, uh, the sidebar here just for, of course, more space to see what's actually going on. So I'll just zoom in and we can start writing the HTML. Okay, so for the HTML, uh, we can first uh, create a new div right here called container. Okay, so this right here is going to be the entire white block itself. Okay, and now within here, um, we can write um, a new form with a class of form and an ID of login. Okay, so this right here is going to be the login form. Now, if you want to submit your form using a traditional form post, you can of course specify here something like post, but in my case, um, this right here isn't required, so I'm just going to remove this. Now, I want to mention also that the actual form itself can quite easily be submitted using Ajax. Um, you can simply prevent default and submit the form. I've got a separate video on doing that if you want to check that one out. Okay, so anyway, I'll just uh, go inside here now. So um, inside the login form, so th uh, there's actually going to be two of these forms. Okay, there's going to be one for login and one for sign up. Okay, so for the login form itself, we can then have a title. We can say h1 with a class of form underscore underscore title. Inside here, we can just say login. Okay, now. For the incorrect uh, username password combination message, we can uh, achieve this using a div. Okay, so we can say right here a new div with a class of uh, form underscore underscore message and also a class of form underscore underscore message dash dash error. Okay, inside here we can then say incorrect username uh, password combination something like that. Now of course this right here is going to be rendered conditionally based on if the user actually you know submitted an incorrect username or password so um, of course when the page first loads up you don't want to have uh, this filled out so it's going to be up to you to handle the existence of this text right here incorrect username password combination. Okay, so we're just putting it here for now so we can actually style it using CSS. Okay, now 
Moving on to the actual inputs themselves, uh, we can create a new div right here called form underscore underscore input dash group. Okay, so this right here is going to be uh, the input group containing both the input itself and also the input error message. Okay, so inside here we can just say for example inputs with a class of form underscore underscore input. Okay, and inside here we can just uh, put a placeholder. So we can say right here username or email. Okay, as the actual prompt. Now also, in the case of the login form, we want the username or email input field right here to be automatically focused for the user. So we can say autofocus right here to ensure it is focused on page load. Now, if you want to have a, um, a custom error message for the input field right here, we can quite easily create a new div with a class of form underscore underscore inputs dash error dash message. And inside here we can just say for example, um, let's just do um, this is an error message. Okay, so this right here is going to make a lot more sense when it comes to the create account form. But just so we can actually style up the form, we're going to have this right here. Later on, we can simply remove this message. So I might just stop here and I want to refresh the browser and we get something like this. Okay, so as we can see, of course, all of the HTML is being rendered out to the screen. Okay, now I want to go back inside here now and I want to talk about um, the naming convention of my classes. So I'm using the block element modifier CSS naming convention, which is why you're seeing all of these underscores and dashes and things like that. I've got a separate video talking about BEM if you want to check that out. But if you don't like this uh, naming convention right here, you can of course, uh, you know, choose to name your classes whatever you like, okay? But I recommend you use this structure right here. So let's just uh, let's just copy this right here for the actual password. So we can say right here, a type of password. Then we can say right here, um, the password as the placeholder. And we can simply remove this error message right here in the case of the password, okay? Now, we're going to also need um, a link to say, you know, forgot your password or uh, don't have an account, sign up, things like that. So we can make a new paragraph down here with a class of form underscore underscore text. Okay. And inside here, we can place a new link with a class of form underscore underscore link. And inside here now, we can make this an href of hash. And we can say right here, uh, forgot your password as a question. Okay, now of course, you may want to link uh, this, uh, this anchor tag to some sort of reset password page, but in my case, I'm gonna keep it empty, okay? We can simply copy this code right here and do the exact same thing for the message, which says, of course, don't have an account, um, create account. Okay, so saving this and refreshing gives us something like this. Okay, so very shortly, we're going to move on to the CSS, but we just want to go back inside here now and add an ID for the actual link right down here. So for this one, we can simply remove this href and we can say ID and we can say link creates account. Okay, so this link, uh, you know, the, uh, the creates account link isn't going to have its own URL, okay? This one needs to simply display the next form. So, with that being said, we can skip out on the href uh, attribute right here. We can just uh, copy this and paste it on this side. Um, uh, you know what, to be honest, you can probably um, include an href if you want to. So, um, you can probably just say href and make this dot forward slash, but um, the reality is it isn't actually required in this example. So we can just leave that right there. Um, but of course, this ID is going to be important because in the JavaScript, we need to reference this anchor tag right here. Now, let's also create the actual login button. Okay, so let's go right up here between the form input group and the actual uh, paragraph. And we can say button with a class of form underscore underscore button. And right here, we can give this button a type of submit. Okay, cool. 
then we can simply just say continue something like that so now uh, saving this and refreshing we have this right here so now we are basically done with the HTML for the login uh, for the login uh, form we can move on to the CSS okay so let's go inside the main.css file now we're going to be starting here with the body okay so for the body itself uh, we can define uh, a couple of CSS properties or variables so we can say right here dash dash color dash primary is equal to uh, the decode green color so we can say 009579 we can now uh, duplicate this and we can make a primary dash dark so this one right here is going to be a darker version of your primary color so we can say for example um, 007F67 okay let's make one more color or um, a few more colors so we can say here color dash secondary and for my secondary color I'm just going to say uh, 252 C6A uh, that is just a dark blue and we can make two more colors for um, for error and success so we can say right here color dash error is gonna be uh, double C and then uh, four threes so of course CC three three and three three then for the color success we can simply just say um, four BB five four four Okay, so the very last property here is going to be dash dash border radius and for this one we can just say 4px. So um, the purpose of these properties or these variables um, is so we just define these, uh, these values once and then uh, we can simply reference them multiple times throughout the style sheet in order to have a single source of truth for these values. Okay, so we can move on to styling up the body a bit more so we can say right here uh, setting a margin to be zero then we can say height at 100 vertical height so 100 vh then we can say display and make this a flex with align items of center okay and a justify content of center so um, these three properties right here are going to vertically and horizontally um, center our actual container for both the forms okay we can set a base font size of 18 pixels right here so just stay slightly larger um, compared to the default of 16 and for the background in my case I'm gonna say background set this to be a URL at dot forward slash background dot JPEG now like I said earlier if you don't have a background you can simply say background and make this your primary color so for example you can instead say this right here you can do var then put inside here your primary color right there and of course not have this so that is if you don't want to uh, want a background uh, image if though you have an image you can simply just of course place this right here to include your image now we can also say background size and make this to be cover that way the image is actually going to take up the entire width um, of the uh, background okay so now saving this and refreshing we can see we get something like this so of course we can see um, the actual background is working and we can see the actual container right here is uh, centered um, vertically now um, I might go back inside here real quick and uh, make sure okay so right here this should be justify content to be center so now let's save and refresh one more time we can see now of course the form is centered okay so everything's looking quite good so um, you know so, uh, so far uh, we can move on to styling up the actual container itself so for the container let's go back inside here we can target the class of container and we can say a width of 400 px and a maximum width of 400 px so essentially this right here is going to of course set the width but also it's going to make sure um, you know when you get down to a smaller device um, the actual width is going to shrink down uh, <coughs> sorry um, it's going to uh, shrink down to whatever it needs to be okay so we're gonna see that very shortly let's just continue here so we can say margin make this one rem 
then we can say padding at 2 REM. So this right here is basically just saying one unit of the base font size. So essentially one, um, one REM is going to be 18 PX and two REM is going to be 32 PX. So of course, two times 18 gives me 32. Okay, so let's go down here. Actually, that gives me 36, my mistake. But um, anyway, we can now say uh, box shadow and set this to be 0, uh, 0, 40 px and RGBA, 0, 0, 0, and then 0 0.2, okay? We can also say border radius, set this to be var, then pass in here your variable for border radius. We can also say background and make this just a white, okay? We can now save this and refresh, and we see we get something like this. Okay, cool. So everything is slowly coming into place. Now, I want to show you this uh, width, uh, width situation. So if I was to go on a mobile device right here, we can see the width is going to shrink based on the mobile, um, the mobile phone width. Okay, so it's going to be able to be responsive right there and of course shrink down as it needs to. Okay, so um, let's move on now to uh, setting a font for all of this stuff. Okay, so Let's go inside here. We can target the container. Then we can also target, if I can just spell this correctly, so we can target the container. We can target the form underscore underscore input fields. We can target the form underscore underscore button. Then we can say font and set this to be 500, one REM, then quicksand sans serif. So right here, it's gonna of course be your own font. Um, whichever font you choose. Um, of course, I'm just setting uh, the font weight to be 500. I prefer a thicker font for the base font um, in many cases, but of course, um, having a normal font weight is perfectly fine here. So if I was to save this and refresh, we get something like this. Okay, so I've actually got the quicksand font installed on my PC. Um, if you want to include your own custom font, uh, you can do so. Uh, using fonts.google.com and you can simply go inside here you can choose a font I recommend choosing a sans serif font right here so once you choose the font so for example if I was to do um, let's just choose open sans okay um, you then want to select your font weights so in my case I want 500 right here so I want to say down here make sure I select the 500 version. So unfortunately, this font doesn't have that. So let's just go back and choose something different. So let's just choose Lato. Okay, this one uh, is also not the one. So let's just try Roboto. Roboto has 500 right here. So make sure you choose 500 and also maybe the base font, so 400, and also maybe the bold right here. So once you choose all of these font weights, you can simply go inside here, press embed, and copy this link right here, and paste it inside your HTML head, and that is going to give you access to that font, okay? And it also tells you how to use it. So for example, right here, we can say, it's saying to use it like this, font family, Roboto, then sans serif. Okay, so let's go back inside here now and of course continue with the CSS. So, uh, we can move on to now styling up um, the actual form itself. Okay, so we can firstly just target uh, form, then we can say um, anything colon first child. So basically right here, we're going to say margin top and set this to be zero. Okay, we can do the exact same thing for the last child. So right here, this will be margin bottom and set this to be zero. So the reason for this is because we have an H1 and a paragraph tag as the first and last child of the form. So we don't want those extra margins to be visible. Okay, so watch the top and the bottom here. If I refresh, we can see those get eliminated right there and everything is a lot more consistent now. We have even space on the padding on the top and the left side, right and bottom. Okay, so uh, moving on now, we can target the form message. So this one right here. So for this, um, we can simply just go inside here and we can say form underscore underscore message and we can begin by saying uh, text align 
and let's make this in the center. Okay, we can also say right here, margin bottom, set this to be 1 REM. Okay, now for the two modifiers, so essentially, of course, our message can be error or success. So we can simply uh, copy this class and we can say dash dash um, success. So for the success error, we can say color and make this var, then pass through here um, color slash success. Let's do the exact same thing for the actual error. So we can say message, then pass through error. We can say color dash error. Okay, so now uh, saving this and refreshing, we can see right here, we of course get the red error. The reason for the red error is because of course, we have both the for message right here and the for message error class. Okay, so having these two classes is gonna apply the font family, sorry, gonna apply the text align and the margin, but also the color right there. If I was to change this to be success, it is now going to be green and we can see that happening right there. So of course in your JavaScript or your server-side rendering you want to of course output the correct error message style. Okay, so going back inside here we can now move on to styling up the actual title. So let's actually place the title up here. We can say form underscore underscore title and for this one we can simply say margin bottom set this to be 2rem and a text align of center. Okay, saving this and refreshing, we get something like this. Okay, so um, now that we're actually done with the incorrect username password combination message, we can simply go inside the HTML and we can just remove the content right here. That way, um, the form is just gonna be a little bit cleaner to work with. Okay, so this right here. So now let's move on to styling up the actual input fields themselves. Okay, so for that one, let's go back inside here. We can target the form input group class. So inside the CSS, we can say form uh, dash uh, input, sorry, my mistake, form underscore underscore input dash group. And for this one, we can simply say margin bottom and set this to be one REM. That way, there's gonna be some space between each one of our input fields. So let's refresh and we get this right here. So just some space between, of course, the input fields and the continue button right down there. Okay, so moving on, let's style the actual input fields themselves. So let's target the form. Sorry, my mistake. I'm just a bit, um, got a bit of a sore throat right now, but uh, that's all right. Uh, so form input, we can target this and we can say display and set this to be block, okay? We can also say width and make this 100%. Okay, then we can say some padding. The padding can just simply be 0.75 REM, a box sizing of border box. Okay, we can also say border radius, make this bar, then pass through here border radius. Okay, let's set the border to be 1px solid, then just a light gray. We can set the outline to be none. Um, the background can be also a light gray, but um, a lighter gray compared to the border right here. Now, we can also say transition and set this to be background at 0.2 seconds and also the border color at 0.2 seconds. So basically, as the input fields gain focus, um, we're going to be animating or having a transition on the background color, which we're going to see very shortly. So just saving this and refreshing we get this right here. Okay, so fairly straightforward. As we can see also, if I refresh, we can see right there, um, of course, the username has automatic focus due to our auto focus uh, attribute right here. Okay, so uh, speaking of focus, let's go inside here and we can say form input colon focus. And for this one, we can just say uh, border color Set the border color to be your primary color. So of course, right here, passing through var, then color primary. We can also say background and set the background to be just white. Okay, so now saving this and refreshing, we can see we get a nice transition for the actual background and of course the border color on the input fields themselves. Okay, so um, now, uh, we can style one last thing on the actual input fields themselves, and that is going to be 
um, the state of an error. So basically, when you have validation errors. So let's go inside here. We can target the class for form underscore underscore input dash dash error. So for this one, we can just say color, or sorry, uh, yeah, color. The color can be var, then pass through here color dash error. Okay, now we can also say border color and set the border color to also be color dash error. So this right here is obviously showing the advantage of having your CSS variables. So of course, if I want to change the error color, um, I can I can quite simply go inside here and I can change it once and it's going to change for, of course, both of these properties. Okay, but anyway, uh, now that the actual class for error has been set up, we can go inside the index HTML and we can say, for example, let's add the form input dash dash error to, of course, the password. So now saving this and refreshing, we can see we have the error properties being applied to the password. If I was to type in here an error, we can see, of course, the text color is red. Okay, so later on, we're going to be learning how to use JavaScript in order to present these errors and, of course, toggle this state. But for now, we have the styles ready. Okay, so let's go back inside here and just remove this form input error class from the actual input field itself. Okay, so moving on now, let's go back inside here. We can uh, we can style up the actual error messages for the individual form, uh, sorry, input field. Okay, so for example, let's go inside here and we can say our uh, form underscore underscore input dash error message. So for this one, we can simply just say a margin top of 0.5 REM we can give a font size, so the font size can just simply be 0.85 REM, okay, and a color of once again bar referencing our color for the error, okay. Uh, so now, saving this and refreshing, we get right here these styles being applied to, of course, the error message right there. So, um, the very last thing or uh, the few last things to style is going to be, of course, the button and these two links right there. So let's go inside the CSS. Um, I might just go inside here once again and just remove um, the text for the error message just so it looks a bit cleaner. Okay, and we can style up the form text class right here. Actually, you know what? Let's start with the button. Okay, so with the button, we can target the form underscore underscore button class and we can say a width of 100%. Okay, we're going to be setting the padding to be 1 REM top and bottom and 2 REM left and right. We can set a font weight, set this to be bold, and we can also say a font size of 1.1 REM, so just a slightly larger font size compared to the base. We can also say color, set this to be just triple white or just white. Um, we can say border, set this to be none a border radius of once again referencing our border radius property. We can say outline, make this none, a cursor of pointer, and lastly, we can say background and set this to be our primary color right here, um, being of course var, then primary color. Okay, now when the actual form uh, gets hovered over, or sorry, the button gets hovered over, we can just target that right now. So we can say form button colon hover. And for this one, we can just say background, make this var, then using our primary color, but the dark version right here. Okay, so now saving this and refreshing, we get this right here. Of course, the styled form button. Now, what about when I actually press on the button? I want something to happen. So let's go back inside here. We can target the form button and we can say colon active. So um, right here, of course, these styles are going to be applied when you, of course, have active on the actual button. So basically, when you click on the button, we can say transform. Set the transform property to be scale at 0.98. So basically, we're just reducing the size of the form button by 2% when you press on it. So now, saving this and refreshing, we get this right here. If I was to click on the button, we get that right there. Okay, cool. So now, let's move on to the actual text and the links. So, back inside here, it's all going to be very straightforward. We can simply target the form underscore underscore text class. 
and we can say text align and make this center. Okay, quite straightforward. And we can move on now to the link. So we can say form underscore underscore link. And for the links, we can say color. And we can make this our secondary color. So we can say color secondary right there. We can say text decoration and set this to be um, none. Okay. And we can say cursor and make this pointer. Now, when you hover over the links, we can say colon hover right down here. So upon hovering over the links themselves, we can simply say text decoration and make this underline as the default. So now saving this and refreshing, we get right here, of course, these styles applied to the links themselves. So we are now done with all of the CSS. We can move on to designing the sign up or the create account form and also the JavaScript. Okay, but first, I want to go inside the CSS and do one last thing. So up here, where the form is, we can say right here, form dash dash hidden. Okay, so essentially this right here is going to say um, display and then none. So we're going to be toggling the existence of the form hidden class between the login and the sign up form, uh, depending on what the user selected. So basically, if I was to add the form hidden class to the login form, so right up here, if I say form dash dash hidden, save this and refresh, we can see, of course, the form becomes hidden. So in this case, I want the sign up form to now be visible. Okay, so to do that, we can go back inside here and we can simply uh, make a copy of this entire form right here. Okay, and this one uh, can simply be ID of create account. Okay, but also it's not going to have this form hidden. So now that one is going to be visible. So now we can simply say inside here create account. Okay. And we can uh, leave this message. That's perfectly fine. Um, for the input fields, we can simply change those to be, uh, let's just do username. Okay, so we can just copy all of this. Then we can say email address. Okay, then we can say password once again. Then we can also say uh, confirm password right here. Okay, in the case of the sign up form or the create account form, I don't want the forgot your password. So let's get rid of this and we're going to change this anchor down here to instead be um, already have an account. Then you can sign in just like that. Now also this ID needs to be link. Then we can just do link login. Okay, so now um, we can just save this and we can refresh and we get this right here. Okay, so now let's move on to the JavaScript, which is going to toggle the existence of this form hidden class on each one of these forms when we actually press on these uh, links down here. So let's go inside the JavaScript right up here and we're gonna begin by saying uh, document.addEventListener and we can listen for the DOM content loaded event. So right here, this is basically going to say once the document is ready to be worked with, we can run this function. And inside here, we can get a reference to both the forms. So we can say const login form is equal to document.query selector, then pass through here um, hash and then login. Okay. We can do the exact same thing for the sign up form or the or the create account form. So we can say create account form equal to right here, then pass through create account as the ID. Okay, so now we can uh, we can grab a, we can grab a reference to both the uh, the link create account and the link login. So we can say right up here. Uh, document dot um, query selector then pass through here link creates account so basically we can then say add event listener so when you click on the create accounts link we can quite simply go inside here and we can say 
In this case, I want to hide the login form, so we can say login form dot class list dot add, and we can add the form dash dash hidden class to that form. In the case of the create account form, this one needs to be visible. So we can say right here, create account form, then pass through remove form hidden. So right there is our toggle. Okay, when you click on the create account, we're going to hide the login form and we're going to remove the hidden class therefore showing the create account form okay let's do the exact same thing this time the opposite way around we can say when you press on the uh, link login so for the you know login link we can remove the form hidden from here and we can add it to this one down here so now saving this and refreshing we can see Upon clicking on the sign in, we get the sign in form right there. Now, unfortunately, um, there is there is one more thing to do, and that is to just uh, prevent the default behavior of the link itself. So inside here, we need to grab a reference to the uh, element or the uh, event. Sorry. So we can pass through here e in both of these, and we can simply say e dot prevent default. So obviously, when you click on a link. It is going to um, go to the actual page in the href. So by doing prevent default, it is going to prevent that default behavior. So in this case, by having this right here, it is not going to redirect uh, via the href. So now refreshing and clicking on the link, once again, we can see we don't get that redirect. And of course, it is working in both ways. Okay, cool. So. Let's move on now to uh, seeing how we can essentially um, set those errors on the form. Okay, so we're going to start with actually setting the error for the login form, the username password incorrect message. So for this one, I just want to go back inside the HTML and I just want to make the login form uh, visible by default. So let's remove this hidden class and instead add it to the uh, the create account form. So we can say form dash dash hidden. Okay, so when it comes to setting the contents of this message right here, we can quite simply go inside the JavaScript and we can define a new function. So we can say right up here function set form. Um, let's do set form message. Okay, so right up here, this will take in the form element itself. So basically, one of these two right here. It's also going to take through um, the type, so either success or error. And it's going to take through, lastly, the actual message. So right here, we can simply then say uh, const, uh, let's just do message element is equal to form element dot query selector we're going to be selecting the form underscore underscore message element inside our given form so of course in the case where you call this function and you pass through the login form it is going to select right here the message within the um, the login form right here in this case being this one right here okay so we can say now we can say message element dot uh, text content is equal to the message right there okay and we can also say right here message element uh, dot class list and we can simply um, remove we can remove uh, both uh, the um, the form underscore underscore message dash dash uh, success and the error so let's go inside here copy this and paste it so basically right here, we're just resetting the styles on the actual message itself. So now we can simply say message element dot class list, then dot add, and we can add um, the form underscore underscore message dash dash, then pass through here the type provided by the actual parameter. So now if I was to call, you know, set form message, pass through login form, then pass through success like this then I say you know you're logged in something like that it is of course going to then add the form message success class and of course also set the message as the text content okay so that being said 
let's go down here and we can uh, say document actually we're gonna say login form so we can say login form okay dot add event listener and we can say submit right here so basically upon submitting the login form we can simply then grab the event object right here and in this case right here if you were to you know uh, submit the form using Ajax or fetch right here you probably want to say e .prevent default. okay that is going to prevent the form from being submitted through a traditional page refresh or submission and now right here you can say you know perform uh, perform your Ajax login or whatever you're doing so Ajax slash fetch um, login okay and then depending on the uh, the return value if it was success or failure you can simply then just say you know uh, set form message you can pass through here login form once again you can say error and you can say um, invalid uh, username password combination so something like that let's save this and refresh and try to submit the login form we can see now upon submitting we get right here incorrect username password combination so that is how to set um, your error messages um, if you want to you know or if you are submitting it through a traditional page reload um, using PHP or something like that you can probably render out your message using the server side in PHP but of course this option is also available okay so what about setting the messages on the individual input fields themselves so for that one we can make a new function called uh, set input error and we can say right here input elements okay so taking in the actual input field itself then we can take through the message so for this one we can simply say input element dot class list dot add we're going to be adding the class of form underscore underscore input dash dash error and that right there as defined in the CSS uh, right down here somewhere it is going to uh, make the color and the border to be red so for that one we can set that class but also we need to then say input element dot parent elements okay so grabbing the actual parent input group then we can say query selector and we can select uh, the form underscore underscore input dash error dash message element then we can say text content equal to the message right there so basically we're starting with the input field itself so this one right here for example so let's just do username for this sign up so we can say the input field itself we're going to go to the parent right up here and then we can select the input message element right here and set the text content so that is what is happening in this line right here so now let's quite simply go down here and we can say um, let's do let's do document dot query selector all so we're gonna basically say right here um, selecting every single input element itself then we're gonna say for each one of those elements okay we can grab the input element then we can say um, right down here when the input element um, uh, we can say add event listener so when the input element uh, is blurred so basically when the user um, takes their focus off the actual input field we can simply say right here and we can check if we are editing a particular input field so for example if I was to go back inside here and I give the create account username field an ID of let's just do something like uh, you know uh, sign up then do username so sign up username as the ID okay so in that case we can just copy this ID let's go inside here and we can say um, if e dot target dot ID is equal to then pass in here the sign up username so basically if the user is uh, blurring or taking focus away from the uh, username field and also e dot target dot value dot link is more than zero so basically if they've actually uh, put a value inside the username field and also e.target.value.length is less than 
let's just do 10 for example, we can simply set the error. So we can say set input error, then pass through here the input element. Then we can say username must be at least 10 characters in length. So something like that. So now saving this and refreshing, we can see now upon going to the create account, if I was to go inside here and put one character, we get right here, username must be at least 10 characters in length. So right here with this block of code, we're basically saying on every single input field, when the user uh, you know, takes their focus away from, so basically when they click out of the input field, we can simply do a few checks. So in this case, we're just saying, is that input field the actual username field? If it is, then we're checking the length. And of course, if it is not valid, we're gonna simply set that error message, okay? Now, the very last thing to cover is gonna be when you want to remove the message right here. So for example, if I was to change this to be decode, okay, I want this message to go away. So to achieve that, let's go back inside here and define a new function. So we can say right here, uh, function clear input error, we can pass through here the input element just like that. Okay, then we can say uh, input element dot class list dot remove and we can remove the form underscore underscore input dash dash error class right here. So basically we're doing the exact opposite of what we did right up there. So I can copy this and paste it down here and just clear out that message. Okay, then back down here, we can now check for the input elements, uh, add event listener, this time listening for input. So basically, when the input element uh, gets input from the user, we can simply say E, then we can say right here, uh, clear input error, then pass through here the input element itself. So this right here is now going to, by default, clear any errors which are set against an input field when the user types inside of it. So now saving this and refreshing, we can now, you know, uh, create this error right here for the short name. Then we can do C and we can see right there, of course, um, the message goes away when the user provides input. Okay, so that right there is how to create a login slash sign up form using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. I'll be leaving all of the code in a link below if you want to download it or check it out yourself. Okay, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.